All right, hi everybody, my name's Laura. Um, I'm a software engineer at Spreetail, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about a process that we're using to drastically speed up our ability to, to determine whether or not we're building the right software. So um, bear with me, I didn't have a title for this talk when I put these slides together, so we're gonna hang out here for a little bit on the Spreetail slide. Um, I'll start with, um, specifically with the talk, it's really about bridging the gap between the design and the development. Um, so a little bit of background, I guess, on myself. Um, my background is not in software engineering, um, no computer science of any kind. My education and all of my experience prior to my professional career was in art, specifically graphic design, print design. Um, software engineering was something that I had an opportunity to get into when I graduated college, when I started my professional career, um, and I really just fell in love with that part of it. So I'm super passionate about you know, closing the gap between software and everybody else, bringing the design and the development together and, and making it a better experience for everybody. So, actually, yeah, we're going to stay here a little bit longer, I'm sorry. Um, a little bit more background, a little bit of context. Spreetail is an e-commerce company. We're headquartered just down the road in Lincoln. And our software team specifically builds products to facilitate our business needs. So that means that our users are also our peers. They typically sit just a few desks away from us. And there's definitely a lot of advantages to that type of accessibility, but it's certainly not without its challenges. Um, we're a fast-paced environment, we want to see results, and for better or worse, a lot of times results in software look a lot like code, just physical lines of code. And if somebody walks by and sees me doodling at my desk, they might think, what in the world is she doing? Um, she's not cranking out code, we don't see products that we can you know, work with and, and, and do our jobs better. So that's why we came up with, you know, as time moves on and we've started to build out the software department and incorporate some disciplines like product management, people like myself with a background design, we really realized that we do have the bandwidth to develop great software in more ways than just writing um, physical lines of code. Um, I think it's, it's not unusual that our users, a lot of times they don't even know exactly what they need at the beginning of a project. And even if they do know what they need, it could be difficult to articulate that. So I feel very strongly that you know, as a software team and with all these different disciplines mixed together that we can really help identify those needs, um, save a lot of time, save a lot of money. And so the way, one of the ways that we're doing that is with design workshops. So first things first, this isn't some brand new idea that we came up with, um, something that as a group at Spreetail, we were really inspired by was the design sprint created by the folks at Google Ventures. It's a five-day approach to testing and learning without building and implementing anything. So a few of them have actually written a book called Sprint, and it's, it's really a book and a guide. There's a lot of great examples, but it's really just a guide to how can you do this yourself. Um, it looks a lot like this Monday through Friday. So Monday, you choose a target. Um, in, in this scenario, you bring a lot of different ideas to the table, and everybody just really hashes it on and decides what do we need to zero in on for the rest of the week. Tuesday, you take all of those ideas and prove them, refactor them, and start the sketching process. Wednesday is all about the storyboard. You pick the best idea from all those sketches and you make a storyboard that becomes your prototype on Thursday. So with this, they really do use a technique. It's, it really is a fake it till you make it type of thing. Um, they're not obviously in a day's time. They don't necessarily time to implement, to engineer, build something. Um, but if they're doing their jobs right, they can fool people into thinking that they're working in a real you know, environment with this prototype. So that on Friday, they can interview experts, um, do user testing, and learn a lot in a little bit of time, a very small investment. So we took some things from this. We were really inspired by this, like I said, reading this book, studying this process, a few others, and came up with some methods that turned into our own two-hour process, a little workshop, um, like I said, called design workshops. So our process, um, the next thing I'm going to go through, this is literally like these are the slides that I share when I facilitate a design um, workshop. It really is just to set the stage. There's a few different you know, methods that we're using that maybe not everybody's familiar with. So it's really just to help paint that picture, explain exactly what I'm you know, expecting from our participants when we start. Um, as far as participants go, I like to cap it off at eight to 10 people. And we'll get into this a little bit more, but I really want a variety. So for us, you know, we build internal products. So it is really easy for us to go out and just pluck people from all over the company, all over our headquarters. Um, but we have folks working in fulfillment centers and warehouses, and they have a lot of different ideas and different mindset than the people that work in you know, maybe finance or business development. So we like bringing in a lot of different people with a lot of different ideas, and I think that that's where we get the best results. So step one, setting the stage. We get everybody in the room, kind of explain what I did just now. 
And the first thing that we want to do is we want to paint the story. So at this point, for us, you know, rather than going in and spending an entire day like Google would of determining you know, what is the target in the first place, we usually have a pretty good idea of like something that we want to implement, something that we want to build into our product suite. So we'll just start with that, get all of those different users together, people that are completely unfamiliar, people that are very domain specific, and say, I just want you to get together. You take eight minutes. Everybody gets their own pile of sticky notes. And then they just write out from beginning to end on, on each note what this, whatever process it is, what it is to them um, from start to finish. Was it starting with research, um, what have you. They get together, put that up on a wall, and, and literally just create a timeline. Um, if people have the same ideas, stick them on top of each other. Just create that timeline. So the next thing, this really takes two seconds. This is just to kind of target things, group things together. The facilitator will just, on the top level, group it in a different beginning, middle, event, and end type of situation. And three is where the fun really begins. This is the ideation part. We use a method called how might we. Um, there's a ton of awesome research and explanation to this. And it's really just taking, you know, how can we brainstorm and, and repurpose ideas, like twist into something new. Um, we just found kind of a, a better brainstorming activity and getting people really thinking. We don't even want to think about feasibility at this point. You know, if we come up with a lot of ideas that we absolutely fall in love with, at the end of the day as a software department, we're going to figure out a way to make it work. Um, another thing is, you know, when you're thinking really outside of the box, coming up with these crazy ideas, inevitably something's going to show up that doesn't necessarily fit into the timeline, and that's totally okay. We still want to stick it up on the wall. Um, it's absolutely still worth looking at and exploring. So another thing that will take six to eight minutes, get all those ideas up there. There's no limit to how many you can do, and then we'll give everybody six stickers, um, a couple more minutes, and they'll go up and they'll vote on their favorite ideas. And this is just going to guide our focus moving forward. Um, the very next thing that we do is we get into I'll show first a couple of pictures. These are just some quick shots of actually from one of the very first design workshops that we had read. So this yellow right here, this is the timeline with the groupies at the top. It's not gorgeous um, like the pictures before. Everything here that's down in a row would, would typically be stacked on top of each other. But it actually was cool and exciting to see that a lot of people were on the same page um, and, and considering similar things during that process. Lots of ideas. Um, we zoomed in on some over here, just a cluster of ideas. and so. Back to that how might we think, framing it. So someone said, how might we evaluate the risk of implementing new items into our portal? So this step five, crazy eights, this is where we get into the sketching part. Um, after a couple of rounds, we were implemented the crazy eights thing. And it was really because the first time that I facilitated a design workshop, I said, OK, so we want to spend eight to 10 minutes now doing really low fidelity drawings. We're going to crank it up later. I don't want you to get be sold on your first idea. And when I said low fidelity and high fidelity, I got a lot of blank stares. Um, people weren't 100% sure what I was talking about. So with crazy eights, it actually is an eight minute session. You force everybody to fold your paper up into eight pieces um, and then hash through at least you know eight different iterations or eight different ideas. And so it keeps it, there is pressure to, to draw things really fast and get ideas out there. And I think it just goes back to, you know, our first idea typically isn't the best idea, so it really forces people to, once again, get out of the box, get out of their comfort zone, and get a, a lot of ideas on the table. So from there, the final thing is the solution. We take another eight minutes after that and say, what's your favorite idea from the crazy eights that you come up, came up with? Take as much you know, paper as you need and draw that out. We're going to get on the wall. Everybody gets a couple of minutes, because there's definitely a little bit of fear here. You know, What if I'm not great at sketching and drawing? Um, I think that some of the best products that we've ever had were probably more words than drawings and stuff. So we give everybody a couple of minutes to you know, explain what it is that they do have on the wall, what their prototype. And then again, we do a round of voting so that as a software team, we can go in and focus on the, the points and ideas that features that people really do like. So this is, again, what it looks like. Um, all the little stickers there, this is, you know, they're voting on this specific piece. Or maybe they like you know, a prototype in its entirety. So it's a little bit all over the board. So at this point, our team will you know, take this, take it back to the table, and that's where we start building the prototype and the implementation. Come back, we'll do the user testing, um, and just rapidly hash through you know, what's really working, what isn't working from a usability perspective, um, all the way down to, are we even addressing the right problem in the first place? So I'll get into a little bit of a feedback from this. Um, there's some quotes from a survey that I sent out, and this is one of my absolute favorite ones. Um, like I said before, one of the first workshops that we did, we actually didn't have a huge variety um, of participants. We were doing something specifically for a business development team, for account managers. So we said, well, heck, let's, let's get account managers. It's their product. They're going to know what we need, right? Well, one of them even said, um, we have a product called Margin Calculator. 
And no one ever once said the words margin calculator in this design workshop, but when we got all the prototypes, all the drawings up on the wall, every single account manager said, well, yeah, so, so this is margin calculator, and then I'm just expi this is something, this is a button or something that we can add to it. And that's exactly what we want to get away from. That's what we've done so many times is, you know, building these enormous, really robust products where features just keep going on and on and on instead of making a new, you know, something that never gets used to its full potential when really we should, you know, be building new things that address exactly what we need. So after the fact, they realized, like, oh, wow, like, these are some awesome, fun new ideas that completely different people, you know, some of our developers, some of our FC people came up with. So they said, it seemed like users were operating under artificial constraints of the software team. And I think it, it made people feel a lot better that they were a lot more confident that they could bring more ideas to the table. I think people trusted the software team a little bit more after this. Um, a couple other things, people just loved the collaborative effort, um, felt like it was a heck of a lot better than anything that they could come up on an individual basis, and then just really zeroing in and, and making something that's potentially a very difficult process to understand very easy and understandable. So the last thing that I have here, this is a real example um, of a product that we're actively working on, something that we went through, um, the design process, and I'll just kind of show you where it's at right now um, from beginning and with the design workshop. So, um, like I said before, we're an e-commerce company and we sell products in a lot of different marketplaces like Amazon, eBay, Walmart. We have our own website. Um, so there's a lot of different prices and a lot of different pr places that people need to manage. And in the past, our account managers would manually do that. They would go to all these different sources and manually look at it, do a lot of research, um, and just make decisions on their own. So we've known for a long time that that's something that needs to live in our product suite, but we really didn't need to know where to go from there. Was it just a giant you know, Excel document that so many people um, love that are very like data-driven? I certainly hope not. So we really just didn't know where to go. Um, and we didn't know exactly what people needed. So we took it to the design workshop phase, got some great sketches, prototypes. And the very first thing that I did was spent, I mean, literally just five to 10 minutes of just taking all those different ideas, all the different features that we liked and throwing it on um, to what we're using here. Everything that we're using here for it is built in Adobe XD, Experience Design. And so this first one you'll see, it's all placeholders. Uh, it's a lot of nonsense, a lot of white space, but we had a lot of people talking about how they wanted a dashboard, how they wanted it ongoing, you know, how am I doing, what are historical price changes that I've made, but then also the pricing itself is very important. So, like I said before, this was going back to where we had a lot of people zeroed in on an existing product they had, and how could we make that better? Um, so for better or worse, that is really how it started out of, you know, having all of your items on one side, but then going into what you see on the right-hand side, even though it's just a blank box, that would be basically a placeholder for something that we have already built in the past. Um, almost immediately, that turned into this. Um, you'll see right now all this fuzzy stuff. It's, it's not really f fake you know, placeholders anymore. This is where we started actually talking to the engineers that are going to be implementing and talking about feasibility. What data do we have? What can we get um, to get in there? So we start pushing that in. Um, but at the end of the day, it still looks very similar. It's still all of the items on the left-hand side and then your margin calculator, um, everything with the pricing information on the right. So went through a few versions of that, and then the very first thing that we tested looked like this. Still not a ton of differences. I think we just beefed it up a little bit more content. We're including our marketplaces on there. Um, we have you know, all of your different options of going in, and, and this is something where I want to either accept or reject, reject a price. So I think the biggest piece of feedback that we got from this was that there, there was a huge disconnect from, well, what do I do in line on this table on the left-hand side, and what do I do within this gray box on the right? That just People didn't really see that connection, and that was where we decided to draw the line. We're not going to move forward with a product that we already built. We want to start from scratch. We want to start new. So the next thing that we built out and the next thing that we tested, it looks like this. Um, at this point, the item has taken over the page. And if you want an additional information, you have to drop down. It's an expandable. And for those skeptics, you know, users that we've had around since day one that want all, all, all the research that they love their Excel sheets, they want all the data, they have an additional research modal too. So this one went off a heck of a lot better. Um, we got really great feedback for this. And so at this point, I'll really just show, um, this is where it's at right now. Not. You know, the changes before were pretty drastic. At this point, we feel pretty confident where we're just hashing out exactly what information that we're displaying and not displaying and at what different tiers. So with that, um, before I get into any questions and stuff, my, my favorite thing about this and the thing that I really like to end with is you see a lot of variation, a lot of really big drastic changes. Um, between all the ones that I showed you here, there are a couple of dozen um, other iterations. And the amount of time that was spent on this um, within the software department between myself, uh, a couple of engineers, a product manager, was a day's worth of work. 
Um, we feel pretty strongly that we would have never gotten to this point had we just jumped directly into engineering it. And we're at a point now where we're starting to build out those stories um, for our upcoming sprints. And we feel confident that you know this is something that we do want to engineer and build because we know that it's going to be useful. We've done the testing um, and we're ready to go. So thanks for listening. Does anybody have any questions? Can you go back to some of your screens? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what, what do you write? What's that? What software do you use to build? Yeah, so this is all built out in Adobe XD. Um, and so some of, for some of the early prototypes where it's just a single page, when we got this into the actual, so this one right here, uh, yeah, for example, this is just a single page that we tested. So we literally printed this off, set in front of people and said, you know, really just wanted someone to explain, like, what are your bearings when you're on your page? What is the first thing that you look at? Um, if you were using this, if this was a real product, what would you do? And we could learn a lot from that. Um, we're at the point now you see that there's multiple pages. So we've built this out in such a way that, you know, if, if we're doing our job right, our, our users sit down and they think that they're actually working within our product suite. They think that it's something that we've built. Um, XD, it's similar to, it's Adobe's version of Sketch, um, also Envision, Marvel, there's a lot of different ones out there. If, if you've used one, you've used all of them. Um, and you can tie things together and, and really make it work to an extent, like a, like a real piece of software would. So we're at the point now where we actually are trying to trick our users and we want them to think that they're within our existing product suite and instead of taking you know, days and hours and thousands of dollars to do it, it, it takes an hour um, from one of our engineers, designers to do. Yep. Awesome. Uh, where we're building a metrics dashboard. And so I heard you say that um, when you went to go surface, like what information actually goes in there, mm -hmm. that you went to the developers. Mm -hmm. Did you also go to the users about what's important to them? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I guess. Uh, I didn't want to get too much, I guess, into the nitty gritty of you know, all the information that we're pulling into this product, but that was absolutely part of the ideation phase too. Um, we still kept, we took all those pictures, we kept every single sticky you note, know, every single drawing um, after facts so we could go back and people wrote specifically, this is what I need as far as research goes. And these are all my different ideas of how do I get that. Um, so we definitely took that and, and it was ongoing as well um, in the user testing, people would say, as far as you know, these different tiers at the end, like how did we decide what information went at what level, what was really accessible and on the front level, what was tucked away and hidden in a modal. Um, a lot of that was with talking to our users saying, they're like, well, I absolutely, I could not make a pricing decision unless I had this information. Um, but we also did spend a lot of time talking to our engineers that you know, manage those databases as well, just because we needed to know what do we currently have our hands on and then also what, what it's gonna cost to, to get additional information that, we, that was requested. So what else? So, what, so the, the design sprint takes a week. What does the timeline look like beyond that? Is this done like immediately before it's selected for development? Is this done months prior to actually building it? With like, what does the rest of the timeline? Look? Yeah. So, because for our like the pr process that we're doing exactly like the design sprint that we were really inspired from really was a week long thing, and then they would go from there um, accordingly. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways. For us, this workshop that we're doing um, prior, obviously, to all these prototypes, was really just a two hour workshop, a two hour session. Um, I'm in the camp, my opinion is that it's never too early to start this. Um, I think there've been certain times where we have been on the ball, we've started right away at the very, very beginning of a project. I don't want anyone to get committed to any ideas. I wanna get all the ideas on the table first. Um, but at the same time, like if you have a project that's just completely gone off the rails, it's, that's also a good opportunity to go in and have a design workshop. Um, then from there, like I said, that's a two hour process. And we always just make a point, I mean, we wanna get back in touch with our participants. A lot of it does have to do with, we wanna create a safe environment where you know, the rest of the company trusts the software engineers and what's going on back in those corners. And so a lot of it, we make a big point to, um, you know, make it a safe environment in the first place where everybody's idea, you know, they're, there's no, nothing's off the table um, to bring his idea, and then we make a point to get these prototypes in, in front of them as soon as possible. So like within a week um, is where we would want to have at least this very first one to say, hey, this is what you drew, and now we got it up um, on a screen so that everybody can see it. So I, I want to have that within a week to show all our participants and just say, start pinging them, getting things on the calendar to do the actual user testing. So depending on how many different iterations you go through, the user testing could take a few weeks. We, we were able to get through this pretty quick, um, but we'll certainly be continue the user testing now as the engineering, the actual development starts. Anyone else? How often do you do design workshops? Um, yeah, as far as, I mean, we, 
it's more and more all the time, right? So it started out, it was kind of a novel idea, something that we hadn't done a lot in the past before we started bringing in product managers and designers, um, some different folks into the software department. So I think people were maybe a little bit caught off guard at first because I've never, nothing like this has ever come out of the software department before. So, but more and more, I mean, every single time we get a new participant in the design workshop, they go, well, I've got a project too where I want to do this. And, you know, we can facilitate it, but, but really I want to get to the point that anyone feels comfortable facilitating like this. I think anybody can um, get great ideas out of a process like this. Anybody else? Oh. So during the workshop, I totally understand that you kind of want to throw anything out, like anything goes, whatever yep. idea you want to go. How do you balance that with the actual constraints of what your application is today? Right. Or what technologies you use? Or, like those can be at odds at times. So how do you find mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. And, and something I should have mentioned before, I, I talked a lot about how I want a variety of participants, right? It's absolutely essential that we have at least one product manager, at least one software engineer in there. Um, because it is a pretty open, like, we're not just sitting there quietly in our own corners doing the drawing, doing the sketches. People are pretty openly communicating and talking all the time. So if you have any questions, if there's something that, you know, you want to put a crazy idea on the board, but this is your first time doing something, you're maybe a little bit questioning it, um, they usually are able to answer that on the spot. And it also just gives them, it's able to, you know, if we fall in love with this crazy idea, idea that's not maybe feasible tomorrow, they have the chance to start thinking right away, right at the beginning of the project, okay, well, how could I make this a reality? Anybody else? Cool. Well, thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it.